Now that we know what modules are and component registration and data modeling is done in XM Cloud, we can start as application developers to implement the components in our Next.js app. Of course, we have to keep in mind that we do not only develop for the website visitor, but also for authors or marketers maintaining the website content. In this video, we will implement a couple of list-based components referencing other items or just having child items. In the previous video, all the items were created that are needed for the component registration and content modeling. Also, the components have been added to the page. Now it's time to fill those components with live, meaning to implement the head application part for them. First thing we do is scaffolding each component using the JSSCLI and the scaffold command. We have to provide a component name that matches the rendering item name. Also, I want these components in the general components folder, so I add that to the component name. I start with the client list, team list, skills overview, testimonial list and feature list. In the components general components folder, I can find all TSX files representing my components containing a basic implementation based on the components template. We talked about that in a previous video in more details. Let's start our local host and see how it looks so far. I navigate to the newly created page that contain my components. Well, as in the cloud we saw the orange warning that there is no implementation, on my local I can see the simple implementation of the component I just scaffolded. This is just displaying the component name. Before we start coding the components, let's have a look on how they are structured. All components will consist of one part that represents the parent meaning the list component. This is what authors will choose to add these components to the page. In addition to that, we will have to create a component that represents the child item of the list. That simplifies maintainability later. As these components are just UI components and not meant for usage in pages, we create those under the atoms folder, so they don't get indexed by JSS. Also here, I run the JSS scaffold command, passing the path source, atoms, general components, and then the component name, starting with the client image, then the employee for the team list, skill, testimonial, and feature. Now we can start the actual implementation. Let's begin with the client list then. As we have the static HTML available, I can copy this into my clientlist.tsx file. The class attributes causing errors, so I exchange them with the class name. I do a Ctrl F, search for class, Ctrl H to replace it with the class name, and then Ctrl Alt Enter to replace all. Let me select the part that repeats and copy that into my client image component. Back in the client list.tsx, I remove all the inner repeating markup that will be represented by the client image.tsx later. I define the client fields, which is only client image, as image field. I need to import image field from JSS. Now I add the client fields to my field attribute of the fields props. I remove the rendering property as I don't need that. And I remove unnecessary imports. Seems there is a spelling mistake in the interface. To actually pull the image from XM Cloud and also make it maintainable in pages, I use the JSS image component passing the field props.fields.clientImage. I need to import the image from JSS. Actually, that is image as JSS image. Let's make that camel case. I copy over the class name and remove the original image tag. Back in the client list, I define the interface clients with the fields client fields that I import from the client image.tsx file. Next, I define the interface with all fields expected for the client list component. That's a title as text field and clients as an array of the clients I just defined. Now I can add the fields property to the client list props of type client list fields. In the h2 tag, I want to use the actual title coming from XM Cloud, so I use JSS text here to make it also maintainable for marketers in pages. 
I import text from JSS as JSS text and define the field props.fields.title. For the child components, I need to iterate through the client's property. I'm using the slice method here as I want to make sure I don't get more clients than 8. I define the constant client props that I want to pass into my client image component later on. I need to import client image props. Looks like I did not export it. Let's change that. And back to the list. It requires params using props.params, fields using props.fields and id using idx. I can return the client image component. I also need to import that. Looks like it's not existing. That is because my component was auto-generated by the JSS CLI using the default name. I changed that to client image. And now I can pass the key attribute using idx and the client props. Looks like also the id field was missing in the client image component. I defined that as number. The fields property is still causing an error. Of course, I need to pass client.fields. The component looks already close to what we envisioned. But it's clearly missing some styles. Let's change that. In the source assets sas component folder, I create the folder named general components. In there, I add a file named index.scss and a file named underscore clientlist.scss. In the index.scss, I import the new client list. And in the clientlist.scss file, I copy my styles. Of course, my new index.scss file from the general components folder needs to be imported in the components index.scss file as well. I also have some general styles that I want to add that are not component specific. I create an underscore company.scss file in the root of the SAS folder. I copy in some styles. Also, this needs to be imported, this time in the main.scss. Now the component looks as expected. Great! The next components are mostly the same, so I go faster over it. Let's continue with the team list component. I copy the markup. I exchange class by class name. And I copy the repeating part into the employee component. I define the fields expected, name, role and image. I add the employee fields to the employee props and add the ID field. Now I use JSS image to display the image. Of course, I need to import it first. Now I can display the name and the role using JSS text. I add the underscore team list SCSS file to copy my styles to. I register the team list styles in the index.scss. Now, back in the team list, I define the fields I expect. Title, intro, and team as array of employees. I define employees as employee fields I defined earlier. Now I can add the fields in my team list properties. Let me use JSS text again to display the title. And I can copy that to also display the intro text. Last but not least, I need to iterate through the team to get each employee item and pass that into my employee component. Looks like the employee component is not recognized. That's because when generating the component using the JSS CLI, it got named default. Also, employee props are not exported. Looks good. Next on the list is a skills overview. I copy the markup. I exchange class by class name. Copy the repeating part into the skill component. I define the fields I'm expecting, name and rate. I change the default to skill. Now I want to display the name field. Seems I have not yet added the fields to the props. Done. Same I do for the rate. As the reactive is not expecting the area attributes, I need to use the prefix data. Also, 
I want to fill the skill diagram with a green bar based on the rate field. To make it more readable, I define the diff style constant with some CSS. The width will be based on the props.fields.rate.value, concatenated with a percentage sign. Now I can add it to the inline styles. Back in the skills overview component, I define the fields I expect, the title, the intro text, and skills as an array of skills. I define skills and add the fields to my props. I add the title to the markup using JSS text and also the intro text. I remove all markup that will be handled by my skill component and I iterate through all skills. As I have a two column layout, I first iterate through the first three skills and later to the next three. Seems I forgot the ID field again. Now I can copy all of that and as mentioned I iterate through the item 3 to 6. I need to add some styles again, therefore I add the skills overview.scss file and copy the styles in. I import my skills overview styles in the index.scss. Skills look good. Now it's time for the testimonial list component. This component is slightly different than the others. Instead of referencing content items through a multilist, I use child items. Keep that in mind when we code the testimonial list later on. I copy the markup again, exchange class by class name, I copy the repeating part into the testimonial.tsx file, I define the fields the component expects, name, role, image and quote. I export the props, I add the fields to the props and remove the rendering. I want to display the image using JSS image, passing the image from the props. Now I use JSS text again to display the name. I copy that for the role and the quote. I rename it from default to testimonial. Back in the testimonial list, I remove the markup that's handled by the testimonial component. I define the fields I'm expecting. This time I have to do that differently. The problem is that the content resolver used for my component by default does not provide child items. So I have to use a different content resolver. I defined the fields I'm expecting for each child item using fields. Name, role, image and quote. And I define an extra interface named fields that contains an item as result testimonial fields array. I pass this to my fields in the props, so the data structure is slightly different. Now I iterate through the testimonials and return the testimonial component. Seems there is an issue with the fields. The message says the quote is missing in the type. This seems to be a spelling mistake. Fixed. To style the component, I create the underscore testimonial list.scss file, copy in my styles and import it in the index file. You can see that an error is displayed. The item object is undefined. This is because I have not switched the content resolver yet. In Content Editor, I navigate to the testimonial rendering and scroll all the way down to the rendering content resolver field. Here, I need to choose the data source item children resolver. Save. Once reloaded, I see another error. I've seen that before. Usually, this means you have to restart your localhost. Let's check again. That looks better. Last one for today is the feature list. Same procedure with slight differences. I start with copying the markup, exchange class by class name, I copy the repeating markup into the feature component. I define the fields I'm expecting, which is name and icon. The icon is coming from a drop link field. Remember how to reference those? If not, you can look it up in the service component we created in a previous tutorial. So I define the fields I want to make available with the icon field. That is fields, class, value. And I also want the value of the hex color field. I remove the rendering from the props and add the fields and ID. 
For better readability, I define a constant label using the props.fields.icon.fields.class.value. And I define a second constant with props.fields.icon.fields.hexcolor.value. I can use the label now in the class name attribute and the color in the inline styles. I define the h3 element using JSS text with props.fields.name. Back in the feature list component, I define the fields I expect title, intro text, and features as array of feature. I define the interface feature and add the fields to the props. Now I delete the repeating part and iterate through the feature array. I return the feature component. I create a feature list.scss file to add my styles. I import the file. When I check the local host, I see that it looks already quite good, but it's missing the icons. That is because we have not installed the remix icons to our app. There is an npm package available. Let me install that. I also need to import the remix icons. Now the icons are displayed, even in the right colors. Now that the implementation is done, let me stage the code. Implement general components. I commit and push the code. And yes, I want to push my local branch and create the remote. Now I also need to pull the items that have been created on the XM Cloud instance. Therefore, I .NET Sidecoster pull from the dev environment. Looks like I'm not logged in anymore. So let me log in. Confirm the code and select the organization. I pull again. Now my items are pulled. The default rendering host is not part of this implementation, so I discard it. All other items are fine. I stage those. Comment, items created for general components. Commit and push. Before I create the pull request, I probably need to solve some linting issues. So I run an npm run build off screen and fix all linter issues and add another commit. Otherwise my XM Cloud build would fail. Then I create a pull request and merge it to main. This triggers a deployment to my XM Cloud instance. The changes were successfully deployed. So let's check my test page. Looks like all components are there and look fine. I'm also able to inline edit the fields. My components have been fully implemented and deployed. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my video. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss further content from our Discover Sidequest channel. Leave a comment if you have questions or any remarks. See you next time.